Okay, here we go then, part two on the gearbox uh, build. We're going to today put the main shaft in, the lay gear cluster, and fit a set of roller bearing drop gears. We'll just show you how to put the roller bearing spindle in. Okay, we're just going to warm the casing up now, just so that we can expand it large enough so the spindle will drop straight in instead of having to force it in and actually tear the inside of the hole out. So it won't take a lot of heat. There we go. Pop it in. Hold it in place just till the, uh, the aluminium contracts. Then you'll see. There we go. It's got it. That's all we need. Okay, we've just moved over to the vice. We're just going to put the first motion gear into the bearing. So, basically, we'll just open the vice, pop the bearing the right way around, pop the gear in. You'll notice down the centre of the gear, there's a hole which a punch will actually fit into the bottom of. So what we'll do is, we'll pop the punch in too, and then... So bearing is now on the gear. Right, we're just going to pop reverse gear now in. So, reverse gear down onto the pin, push him over into position, pop the reverse gear shaft in, and there we go. Right, next job. This is the main shaft which we built up the previous week. We'll drop that now in to position. Drop him onto the selector forks, like so. Okay, we're now going to put the first to third needle roller bearing in. So a little tiny drop of lube. Drop the bearing on the shaft, like so. Spin him around a little bit, get a bit of it everywhere. Okay, now the first motion gear. This is the gear we've just put on the bearing. Some people call it fourth gear. It is actually the first motion input gear. So there's the gear. Here's the bolt ring, pop the bolt ring on, make sure you get it on the right way around. Okay, now this has actually got to fit into here. So, once it's in place, you'll find it'll locate onto the bearing that we've just put on the nose of the main shaft. A punch, and we've just got to knock the bearing home. Now you've got the bearing in place, you need to put the circle pin behind to actually stop it from popping out. So we'll put the circle in the pliers and that goes in just there. Okay, so that's in place now. We'll now spin the box around and we'll put the third motion bearing in. Don't forget this needs the circle wire clip put in on prior to fitment. This is the clip. You can use the old one off the old bearing as it doesn't do a lot. So just spin him round. Pop the clip in place. That's good to go in. Slide it into position. We do have a proper sleeve that actually locates on the outside of the bearing, but obviously you won't have one of those at home, so this is the only way to do it. But don't put too much hammer on it. Now if you go down onto the outer race, now you've got it right below the surface. There you go, it's home. Just tap it the other side so you know you've got it fully home. Now your um, main shaft assembly should spin like so. We're now going to put the lay gear in, but while you're putting the lay gear in, if you're going to fit a centre pickup pipe, you need to roll them both into position at once. Because they're a welded section just here, make sure that you surface this face to make sure it is perfectly flat. Otherwise, the gasket won't fit 
and then when the oil pump tries to draw engine oil out of the sump it will suck air in here instead of sucking oil up here so make sure that face is 100% flat and there are no burrs on the threads here's the lay gear here's the bearing we'll pop a bit of lube on the top there we go drop so plenty in there here's the bearing for the other end lube and down we go in there okay now before you drop this one in it's always best to fit the thrust washer into the fourth gear end now here's your thrust washer if you put a bit of lube on the back of this it will make it actually stick to the gearbox casing otherwise as you put the lay gear in the washer will drop into the bottom of the gearbox like that drop the lay gear onto the mating gears on the main shaft drop the centre pickup pipe in and as you roll it into place the pickup pipe will roll into place as well there we go push the lay gear against the thrust washer lay shaft now into place just need to wiggle it around to get it in make sure it's home there we go push him in don't push it all the way home yet because you've got to put the other thrust washer in the other end here's the first gear thrust washer that one fits in down there okay so now the washer is in place we'll just push the lay shaft through into place there we go here's a five thou feel gauge and what we do is we just pop him down in there and then just check there you go no end float and now that's the end float with the feeler gauge in nothing okay. now you've got to put the retaining plate in that locks reverse gear spindle and lay shaft and this actually stops the lay shaft coming out and reverse coming out but you have to get them in a particular way round and if you push the slot for the reverse gear to there and then the lay gear spindle turn him round you see the slot there that wants to be around about that position we'll push the plate in we'll push the leg back until it locates there we go and now you've got to push this by rotating this one and this one until this hole lines up with the bolt hole that holds the bearing retainer on. If you watch, there's a slot in here that you can actually wiggle backwards and forwards until you actually get the hole lined up with the tapped hole behind it for the screw to go through. There's a slot in the opposite end of the lay shaft, so you can do the same with the lay shaft. Next job is the bearing retainer. So this goes on around here, like so and sits in there to hold the bearing in. Right, once you've got that pushed up, you need to check the pinch just there. Now, all this is actually doing is pushing the bearing against the circlet that we fitted, against the casing. It doesn't put any preload on the bearing. It just preloads the bearing into the casing. So you need a couple of thou pinch there just to tighten it up. That there at the minute is about five thou so a couple of thou pinch on that we need a three thou shim now be careful because this can go two ways around and it fits behind the plate so you just need to push that out enough to get this behind there we go so that's in place now and you'll notice there's one, two, three screws. There used to be four screws, but Rover deemed this hole not to be necessary because it was a fracture point on the gearbox case. So this now drops in over the top, and then you need the screws and the lock tabs. So there's the first one. 
pop the screw in, down he goes. Second lock tabs and screws in the bottom. I'm just going to close it now. One, two, three. Just make sure everything spins still. There you go, you're all okay there. So we'll now pull them up tight. Don't go too brutal on these because it, you're only pulling up into aluminium. Pull the tab washers down. The next job then is just to bolt the centre pickup pipe in. Here we go, we've got the plate with the bolts with the gasket on. We'll pop those through. Okay. Now we need another gasket on the inside. If you just pop the gasket onto the bolts, just hold it in place. Bring the pickup pipe over. Wiggle it over a touch further. There we go. We should now be able to spin the bolts in. Before we just finish tightening these, we'll just put the bracket bolt in, which is this one. Drops down through there with a nut and washer on the bottom. A little bit tricky to get in these two. Try and get them on without dropping them in the bottom of the box. There we go. One. Two. Pop the ring spanner on the nut below, just there. And then just spin the top. There we go. Centre pickup pipes all clear. Everything's in and ready. So what we've got to do now is put the input gear on, the lock nut, and the pinion gear and the lock nut. So we'll just pop those on to start with. This one's running in helical gear. It's the original one out of the original gearbox. So that one goes on like so. New tab washer. And nut. Spin it round. And we'll pop this one on. There we go. That's the gear on. New lock washer. And the nut. So what we've got to do is lock the box in two gears at once. So take your uh, gear location spool, knock it completely out of gear. Everything is around this side, away from the selector spool. If you just pop a screwdriver behind the centre pickup pipe, just pull it into fourth gear, and then into first gear, there. Now you'll know the gearbox is completely locked up. Now normally we've got a jig where we turn this over, we bolt it to the bench and we torque it up on the bench. But if you're trying to do this at home, this is the way to do it. So we'll ask Sam to come round, we'll pop this on the floor, just here, and we will torque the main nut up. There we go, so we're on there now, and we're going to torque it to 150. So, hold tight, Sam. Mm -hmm. so we'll do the one on the other side. Drop the torque down on that one. And this side we torque up to 120. Perfect. Okay, now we've got the two nuts locked up to the correct torque. You'll see now the gearbox is all nice and free. Just make sure you now you put the interlock back into place through the selector fork there. Give it a little bit of a jiggle. You might find some reverse gears move, so there we go. There we go. So that now is all in place. Last job before you put the diff in is to tab over there and there. We've just got to pop this back on, which is the roller bearing idler gear. The beauty of these is you get no side thrust 
and you're not using the inferior quality idler gear bearings in the casings. So these are far more reliable. So on you go with the gear, space washer, and this is the piece that actually fits into the flywheel housing as you fit it into flywheel housing. When you put flywheel housing on, that will press up against there, hold the whole assembly together. And there you go. So you've got input gear, idler gear, primary gear will go on the crankshaft, and then the drive will come down here through the gearbox, out through the pinion, into the crown wheel, through the differential, out to your wheels. We'll go through the differential next week, building it up, fit it in the gearbox, and shimming it, etc. And that'll be part three with a complete box.